Hey, what's going on guys? So good news is the built-ins are about 90% done in my living room. Um, the bad news is my workshop's just been a mess. If you saw my last video, you know that there's been water everywhere, dripping down from the ceilings, coming from the floor, getting all over my tools and wood. Um, so while that's been drying out, while I've been trying to clean up and fix that, uh, I've been up here building these really cool built-ins. So today I'm gonna show you how to make this awesome cherry countertop. And part two of this video is gonna be shaker style cabinet doors with these awesome anti-slam self-closing hinges. Um, is it alien technology? I mean, possibly. I don't know how they work, so let's install them. All right, so to get started, I grabbed my collection of one inch wide by quarter inch thick, 10 feet long strips of cherry that I've been collecting and a plywood base to hold it all together. And like any project, we're gonna need some measurements to get started. The opening at the top measures 67 and a half inches long and 18 and a half inches wide. A tip for getting the measurements on those tricky corners is to grab a piece of paper, place it up against the back, mark where a hole number from the tape touches the paper, and then take the paper and tape out, line it back up, and see where the end of the paper touches the tape. Looks like it's actually 67 and a half right on the dot. A while ago in the early stages of building the cabinets, I cut this piece of plywood to use as a surface. I wasn't sure if I needed it, but it served as a work surface for the remainder of the build. My original thought was to make this one large solid piece of wood, but that would have been too easy, so I changed the design last minute to something more intricate. The plywood has the correct length to fit in between the shelves, but it doesn't quite reach the outer edge on both sides of the reveal, as well as the front face, which I'll fix later. But for now, I'll start cutting up the quarter inch strips of cherry to cover the surface. I'm going to be laying them out in a 45 degree pattern starting from the center. To do this, I'll first find the center point on both ends of the plywood and then draw a line to connect them. And then on just one side of the plywood, I'll measure out that same distance on both sides of the line. This will allow me to draw a perfect 45 degree angle from point to point, which will make the alignment of each piece much easier later on. This new line measures about 26 inches. I'll now set up my miter saw to 45 degrees and cut two pieces slightly longer than the length of the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. The angled cuts go together at the end of the board and protrude past the other side. This is good, I'll want to do this for the remainder of the pieces because it's easier to trim off what I don't need rather than come up short or try to create a perfect cut each time. To fasten them to the board, I'll use a little bit of wood glue and a brad nail on either end. If you have a pin nailer, use that instead as they leave a much smaller hole. I don't have one, but I'll show you a solution on how to patch the holes later on. Next, just keep making those cuts and repeating the previous steps for all the pieces inside the initial strips until you've created a large triangle. That was the hard part, as the remaining pieces don't need any specific angles. Just cut them to length to cover the remainder of the plywood. Once the glue dries, I'll grab my router, as well as what's called a flush trim bit, setting the depth of cut to just past the width of the cherry, making sure the bearing touches the plywood, but the blade hits the wood. Cutting this way allows me to easily trim off pieces that stick out past the base, so that the new surface will be the same size as the pre-fit plywood. If you're doing something similar but don't have a router, you can easily achieve this with a handsaw. After cutting all four sides, I took it back into my living room to see how it looks. It was right at this point that I realized I forgot to add in extra wood I'll need to make the surface flush with the cabinets. But no worries, I can fix this later on with a few creative cuts. Now I'm going to patch the holes left over by the brad nailer. For this I'm just going to mix up a bit of wood glue from the sawdust left over from cutting up the strips of cherry. And then start pressing it into the holes. Next I'm going to do some sanding. I'm going to start with 150 grit and then later on move to anything above 250 for the finish. This gets out any scratches left behind by the 150 and gives it a much better feel. Afterwards I'll take it back inside, maneuver it into place and start sizing up what I'll need for the outer trim pieces. Looks like there's about half an inch reveal on the front and three quarters of an inch on the side. Now I'll start drawing up what I'll need to rip on my table saw. The final size will be about one inch wide to match the surface pieces and three inches tall with the width not only cover the surface of 67 and a half inches, but also include room for the miters that turn the corners. There's also that half inch reveal in the front, so I'll cut out from the back side a piece to account for the overhang. The width of the plywood plus the width of the cherry strips add up to be one inch thick, and from the cabinet being a half inch proud, I'll need to cut away two inches from the height and a half an inch from the back. My final piece will look something like this. Now I'll grab a piece of cherry that matches the surface. Next I'll cut the board to width. Luckily it's already 3 inches wide so I just need to cut it to make sure it's 1 inch thick. Now that my board is to width, I'm going to run it through my thickness planer just to get rid of the marks left behind by the blade. Which can also be done by sandpaper but this way is quicker. Now I'm going to take out the 2 inch tall, half inch thick piece from the back 
which can easily be done with just two cuts of the table saw. And lastly, I'll cut my miters, making sure the inside 45 degree angle is the same width end to end as the countertop, which is 67 and a half inches long. Now that all the cuts are done, I need to affix it to the countertop surface. To do this, I'll start drilling pocket holes in the plywood. Now I'll just grab a few clamps, add a bit of glue, a piece of scrap in between the cherry and the clamps, and then tighten them up. Once they're consistently tight, I'll now start drilling screws into the pocket holes. Note that if you're drilling into hardwood or fine wood, use these finer grade screws instead of wider ones, as those are meant for softer woods like pine. And then once dry, I'll be able to do the same thing for the sides. Alright, so the sides are done, everything has been sanded smooth, and now I'm going to finish it with a few coats of wipe on poly. This stuff is really great, it's just thinner than polyurethane which allows for a quicker drying time and it keeps all the dust and particles out of the finish while it's still tacky. Which is perfect for me because I like doing this stuff outside. Just be sure to lightly sand between at least four coats for best results and protection. Alright guys, and that's all there is to it. So, just a couple coats of polyurethane made this cherry look phenomenal. I'm super happy with how it turned out, and it's as simple as that. So up next is the count of doors, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks.